Welcome back to a new video. This video is going to be about activation functions. This video is going to be one of the videos that I will be adding into the deep learning with PyTorch series. You can reach to that playlist from the cards of this video. Let's start coding. In deep learning, an activation function is a mathematical operation applied to the output of a neuron in a neural network. The purpose of an activation function is to introduce nonlinearity into a network allowing it to learn from and model complex patterns in data. So, in this video I'm going to create a data set and then we are going to use different activation functions and observe the differences between them. The activation functions that we are going to talk about in this video are going to be like the rectified linear unit which we can also refer as ReLU and Sigmoid and lastly we are going to talk about 10H. So. So let's start with the imports. What I'm going to do is I will say import torch and I'm going to import torch.nail network as nail network and also I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot for creating grabs with the data points that we create with different activation functions. So at the x side let's create something like x is going to be torch that linear space we will say minus 5 and 5 and 100 can be okay and I will use that view and I will say minus 1 and 1 and for the y side I'm going to say 3 times torch dot sign 2 multiplied by x plus 0 0.5 multiplied by x a PRW 2 plus torch dot random number 101 so after that actually I'm missing an N in here so I'm going to put that real quick like this and then after running this we are going to see that I'm just going to call the X like this and I'm just going to call the Y we are going to have the both tensors like this great so after that we can just create a scatter plot for seeing how the data looks like I will call it like plt.scatter I will say x.numpy and y.numpy I'm going to set the label like data we will use and then I'm going to say x label is going to be x and y label is going to be target and we can just say like plt.show like this so after that we can see that we have a nonlinear data set we can just add a title like title is going to be let's say data we will use and if I say plt.legend you are going to see that we will have this data we will use as label in here great so we have the legend right now so this is the data that we are going to work and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the rectified linear unit activation function so what I'm going to do is I will say value is going to be equal to neural network dot value like this and then I will say x value and I will say value x so we transformed our data like we applied value to our x values so if I call the x value you will see that the values are going to be different like this so let's create a scatter plot with both the original data and the value transformed x and we can see the difference so what I will do is I will say plt.scatter and I will say x.numpy and I will say y.numpy and we can set a label like data before value like this and we can just create another scatter plot like x value.numpy and y dot numpy and we can just create a label like ReLU activated data and after that we can just say x label will be x y label is going to be y actually it can be also target and we can give it a title like ReLU versus normal and we can just say that legend and we can use plt.show at the end so 
Here is our data right now. The rectified linear unit, which we can also refer as ReLU, transforms negative values to zero, introducing nonlinearity, and it's particularly effective in capturing patterns in data where only positive values matter. So you can see that at the right side, the ReLU side, we don't have any negative numbers. Great. Let's keep with the sigmoid. So I will say sigmoid is going to be nail network dot sigmoid and I'm going to set something like x sigmoid which is going to be sigmoid applied I will say sigmoid and x so after that what we can do is we can just create a scatter plot like this again and observe the difference so we can say plt together I will say x dot numpy again y dot numpy and I will say label data and then I will say scatter x sigmoid dot numpy and y dot numpy and label can be like just set it like sigmoid it will be okay I will set x label like x again I will set y label like y target again I will just give the title again like sigmoid versus data and I will say plt.legend and I will say plt.show at the end of this so here it is the sigmoid function squashes output between 0 and 1 making it suitable for binary classification it's useful when dealing with probability like outputs great so let's lastly talk about 10h so I will say 10h is going to be like neural network that 10h activation function and then I will say x 10h is going to be 10h x we are going to apply that and I'm going to create a similar graph again I will say plt together quickly I will say x dot numpy again y dot numpy and we can just say label data again and then I'm going to say plt together x 10h dot numpy y numpy then I will say label 10h like this and then I will say plt x label x plt y label target title 10h versus data and we can just add a legend like this and then I'm going to say plt dot show and here it is the 10h function similar to the sigmoid squishes values but between minus 1 and 1. It's useful in scenarios where output need to be centered around 0. So let's talk about them one by one. The value activation is good since it introduces nonlinearity computationally efficient and it's bad because it can suffer from the dying value problem where neurons become inactive during training. The sigmoid is good since outputs values between 0 and 1 and it makes it suitable for binary classification. But the bad part of it is prone to vanishing gradient problem. Outputs not centered around 0. Lastly, 10h activation function is good when there is outputs values between minus 1 and 1, 0 centered, reduces vanishing gradient problem. But the bad part of it is still susceptible to vanishing gradient not as computationally efficient as value so in conclusion the choice of activation function depends on the specific characteristics of your data and the requirements of your neural network value is often a good default choice but for tasks like binary classification sigmoid might be preferred 10h can be useful when zero centered outputs are desirable so you can try three of them and observe the results. Thanks for watching the video. I'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and Python programming. You can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I shared a free data science bootcamp where I teach Python, Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, Plotly, Seaborn, and Scikit-Learn with three projects. The video is about seven hours and it's completely free you can just reach to that video from the cards of this video or the link in the description.